Labas, my name is Mangardas, and today I'll share a few interesting ideas about design patterns in Flutter context. First of all, I will briefly introduce the main idea of design patterns in object-oriented programming. I will also demonstrate the example app. And finally, we will investigate the following design patterns and how they were used to achieve the final result. Before diving deeper into design patterns, a little bit about me. I am a software engineer from Lithuania. I am currently a mobile tech lead at Billow, where using Flutter happily is my day-to-day -day business. I'm also a Google developer expert for Flutter and Dart technologies, and also I'm an organizer at Flutter Lithuania. Uh, I'm using Flutter since its beta version, so I think I have some experience to share uh, something interesting with you all. Now moving to the main topic, let's start with some general information about OOP design patterns. First of all, what is a design pattern? Uh, in a short form, design pattern is a typical solution to a common problem in software design, and you shouldn't mix that with UI design. Uh, a design pattern names, abstracts, and identifies the key aspects of a common design structure that make it useful for creating a reusable object-oriented design. Uh, design patterns in general gained their uh, popularity after this book of Gang of Four was published in 1994. Uh, you won't be able to copy-paste the complete solution from this book, uh, however, you could learn how to structure code properly to avoid some basic object-oriented code design pitfalls. Uh, by following these ideas, you could speed up the development process and also improve code flexibility and reusability. The example app I want to show you is Paternifier. It's a simple music playlist management app which name was not influenced by any other music streaming platform in any way. Uh, even though the application is very straightforward, I've used block state management just, you know, to show you how well any uh, state management solution could be integrated with other design patterns. Also, for the dependency injection, I'm using provider since this package is already a dependency uh, by the Flutter block package. Uh, and yeah, uh, I can show you the demo first. So here's the example Paternify app. The app consists of two tabs, the library tab as well as the playlist tab, which is currently empty. So the library tab contains music collections. Each music collection uh, consists of other collections or standalone songs. So you could access the music collections infinite level deep. Uh, if you want to add a song to your playlist, you could tap on the star icon. Also, you could tap on the star icon again to remove the song from the playlist. Uh, also, as you may notice at the top uh, right corner in the application bar, the arrow appear which undoes the previous operation. So yeah, it, it undoes all the operations. Uh, so let's move to other collection and add some songs to our playlist. Now, if we move back to the playlist, uh, you could see that all the added songs are there. If you want to, you could reorder the songs in the playlist um, by drag and dropping them. Also, the reorder operations could, could be undone, as well as the previously executed add song operations. Um, lastly, uh, inside the library tab, you could see that we have a settings gear uh, in the application bar. And by accessing the settings page, you could uh, you switch uh, whether you want to use the Cupertino or Material uh, widgets. So let's say we turn the using Cupertino widgets option off. And as you may notice, the switcher has changed the Material one, the application bar has changed, as well as the bottom navigation bar. Uh, and also the loader, uh, which is not visible there on the screen. So yeah, so that's the example Paternify app. So the first design pattern I want to talk about is Abstract Factory. The official definition from the Gang of Four book of the Abstract Factory is provided in the slide, uh, but in general the pattern is very straightforward. Uh, so we abstract the process of objects creation, and to be more specific, a family of objects or just somehow related objects. And we abstract that by encapsulating the code into separate factory object, which follows the common interface. Abstract factory is a creational design pattern since its main purpose, well, is to create objects. Uh, first of all, we declare a common interface for objects creation, which is named as the abstract factory. Uh, then we create specific factories, which implement operations defined in the interface. Uh, each concrete factory corresponds only to a single variant of products, or you could say it only to a single family of related objects. Uh, we need to define an interface for a type of a product object, 
uh, which in Flutter case could be a stateless or a stateful widget. And finally, the concrete product is just a specific implementation of the component you want to create. To implement the design pattern, first of all, we define an abstract factory interface or in our programming language case, an abstract class. And in this interface, we define methods that should be implemented by all the specific factories. As you could see in this uh, interface, we define methods to create the application bar, to create the bottom navigation bar, loader, page router, and also a switcher. As you could notice in the example app, we have two types of widgets. So these are either material widgets or Cupertino widgets. Uh, thus, we create two concrete factories and one factory, the material widgets factory, is responsible to only create the material widgets, while the other Cupertino widgets factory is responsible to create Cupertino widgets. As you could notice, uh, these both factories implement the defined methods in the abstract factory interface. Next, we implement the specific components or widgets which are created inside the factories. As you may recall from the abstract factory uh, design pattern definition, we need to implement the product interface. Uh, so for the interface itself, we are just using the stateless widget, which you know is a common interface for both material and Cupertino widgets. So on the left, there is uh, the specific implementation for material switcher and material loader. Uh, while on the right, you could see the specific implementation for the Cupertino uh, switcher and also for the Cupertino loader. After implementing all the specific factories and components, it's important to use the right factory in your application. Inside the root component of the app, there is a method which creates the specific factory based on the current platform the app is running. After the specific factory is created, we inject it using provider, so it could be resolved from the widget tree uh, in any place of the app. Finally, when we need to create specific component, we just simply resolve the injected factory and use its methods to create components. Uh, important thing to notice here is that we only use the interface to resolve the factory and later use its methods. Hence, the code does not really care about the specific implementation details, uh, whether we want to create material or Cupertino widgets. The injected factory takes care of that. Okay, uh, we have our widgets as separate components. Now we need somehow to glue them together. Uh, for this task, we will use the composite design pattern. So the official definition of the composite design pattern is visible on the slide, uh, but when we talk about the composite design pattern, we talk about the tree data structure. And a good example of that is, well, a Flutter widget tree, uh, where widgets could have child or children property, uh, thus we are able to create a whole app composed of separate widgets as a single tree structure. Uh, the main idea of this pattern is to define a common interface that uniformly represents both leaf and composite nodes. So the leaf node is a node that does not have any children, and the composite node is a node which have uh, one or more children. And by defining a common interface for both of these nodes, we are letting our code to treat every element of the tree structure in the same manner. Composite is a structural design pattern since it defines the structure of the code. Uh, we define a common interface for objects in the composition and then define two kinds of components, leaf and composite ones. Leaf nodes, well, as I already mentioned, does not have sub-elements or child components, uh, so it defines behavior for primitive objects in the composition and actually does most of the real work since they don't have anyone to delegate this work to. Uh, differently from the leaf components, composite objects stores children elements and delegates the work to them, while the children processes uh, intermediate results and then returns the final result to the client. To implement the composite design pattern, first of all, we define a common interface for both leaf and composite nodes to follow. In our case, we define a music library item uh, abstract class that defines methods to get the uh, count of objects in, in this uh, structure, also get the total duration of, of this music library, and also define a method to, to build the actual component. Then we implement the defined methods in our leaf node and our composite node. Uh, the leaf node uh, just simply implements those methods, since without having any children you cannot really delegate the work to. On the other hand, the composite node contains a list of items of the music library item interface, and this allows us to put other composite nodes together with leaf nodes, hence building the tree structure, and also delegating the work to leaf nodes. In addition to this, leaf and composite nodes also extend the stateless widget, and this allows us to build these components as a standalone widgets if we want to. 
This provided code is not really related to the uh, design pattern itself, but this is uh, how we build the tree data structure that is later used in our example app. So first of all, we retrieve the required information for the music library, so that's music collections and songs. And then we build the whole composition. So first of all, we put every single collection into the map, which is used as a lookup table. Uh, then inside the for loop, we go through each of the collection item and check whether it contains a parent ID. And if that's yes, it means that this collection belongs to the other collection. So we just simply assign it. Uh, then the whole uh, tree structure is there. We just simply add the songs to the corresponding collections. And lastly, we return a list of top level collections. So we have our music library that is visible in our example apps UI. Okay, uh, we have our composition. Now it's time to render it. Uh, and in fact, it's very straightforward. We just go through the list of music library items and we call the build method on them. Uh, we do not really care whether this specific item is a leaf node or the composite node, we just simply use the unified build method from the, from the interface. And that's the beauty of the composite design pattern since uh, we do not really care if we need to render uh, just a simple uh, leaf node or we need to render a complex composite node. We just call the unified method on them and the rendering is, is just working. Also, if we want to render the leaf or composite nodes as a standalone widgets, there's no restriction to that. They both uh, extend the stateless widget. So yeah, we just could use them straight away. Well, with the previous two design patterns, we implemented the whole structure and UI of the app. Now it's time to add some interactivity to it. So here goes the command design pattern. The official command design pattern definition is provided on the slide. Uh, but in simple words, command is just a unit of work or a request extracted to a separate class object which contains all the required data to execute the operation. Uh, since we have all the needed information inside the class, the request is completely decoupled from the sender and that brings a lot of benefits. So first of all, we can, we can uh, queue several commands and execute them at once. We can delay them, uh, we can change the order of the commands, we can do, undo the last operation, etc. Differently from the previous two design patterns, command is a behavioral design pattern since it defines how different components interact with each other, meaning it defines the behavior between them. Um, to implement this design pattern, the common command interface is defined and later concrete commands are created so to implement the specific execution logic. Then the invoker triggers the command instead of sending the request directly to the receiver. Uh, so it means that the client code does not operate on the state directly, for that a standalone, a separate commands are used. Uh, then uh, the receiver knows how to perform the operation and the receiver is just an object on which we want to operate. So usually the receiver contains the state we want to mutate. In the example app, we have three different operations or three different commands that are applied on the playlist. So that's add or remove song to or from a playlist and also change the order uh, of songs in it. Uh, for the playlist commands, we define a common interface to execute and undo the command. Then we have a base command class uh, that stores our receiver as well as backup uh, list of songs. And this backup is stored once we initialize the command and we just simply copy the current songs list. In our case, the receiver is a playlist class. This class contains a state which we want to mutate and that's a list of songs. So by using commands, we want to add or remove songs from the list and also change the order of, of the songs inside the list. As I already mentioned, our example app has three different commands. So that's add a song to the playlist, remove the song from the playlist or reorder songs inside the playlist. As you may notice, each of these commands implement the execute method defined in the playlist command interface and each of these commands contain all the required data to execute the operation. Now, when we want to somehow operate on the songs in the playlist, instead of mutating the state directly, we create a command instance for that and pass the command to the qubit class. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the concept of a qubit, it is a part of the Flutter block package and it is a simplified version of block class uh, where we call the functions directly instead of sending events to the, to the block. Uh, as you can see, before executing the command, we store it in the command history stack so we could use this when we want to undo the operation later on. And also, I want you to notice that we have only one method for all the different playlist commands to execute. Since they follow the same interface, we just simply call the execute method on them and do not worry about the implementation details. 
It's quite similar for the undo operation, only we don't need a separate command for that. Uh, we call the undo last command uh, method on the qubit. Uh, then inside the qubit, we pick the last command from the stack and just trigger the undo method. And again, uh, we don't care about any details on how to do that, the command takes care of all the details by itself. So that's it about the command design pattern, and the last one I want to talk about is Memento. The official definition of the Memento design pattern is provided on the slide. Uh, when we implemented the specific commands, uh, we just simply stored the list of songs as our backup option. Uh, however, technically we could mutate the backup state from inside the command class, because you know, it's just a simple list and we know its methods. Uh, thus, we will use the Memento to encapsulate and protect our backup state. Uh, so the Memento design pattern lets you save and restore the previous state of an object, and that's called a snapshot, uh, without revealing the details of the implementation. The same as command design pattern, Memento is also a behavioral one. And I would say a very tricky one as well. So here are the responsibilities of each class in this design pattern. So Memento interface restricts access to the concrete Mementos fields, and it only declares methods related to Mementos metadata. Uh, then the concrete Memento stores originator's internal state and also protects against access by objects other than the originator which has created it. Uh, the caretaker only keeps the memento, but never operates or examines its data. Uh, originator creates a concrete memento containing a snapshot of its current internal state. It also provides the restore method to restore the internal state using the concrete memento. Uh, so to sum up, uh, originator creates the snapshot of the current state, which is stored by the caretaker. Uh, later, when we want to restore the state, once again, we use the originator for that. Nor caretaker, nor any other class has an access to the backup. So the state is completely encapsulated in, in, and it cannot be accessed from the outside. Even though the Memento design pattern seems very complex, actually all the implementation details are visible in this slide. So first of all, we define the Memento interface, which only allows to get the state, but not to operate on it. Uh, then we implement a specific Memento, which stores the backup of a playlist state. And then originator class takes care of the Memento's creation and implements the restore method which retrieves the playlist backup from the Memento object. So for our case, the caretaker is the command itself. Previously, we stored the backup list of songs inside the command uh, which could be mutated directly, but now the command cannot mutate the backup directly in any way. During the initialization of the command, the Memento or the backup is created by originator. When we want to undo the operation and restore the backup, again, the command does not change anything. Originator takes care of that. And command execution itself is pretty similar, uh, but this time we pass the originator object instead of the backup directly to the command. So this is the comparison of our abstract command class without and with a memento. So uh, without the memento design pattern, we just simply store the state and our backup directly. So when we wanted to mutate the state or undo the operation, we just mutated the state uh, directly from inside the command. By using memento, we encapsulated the state inside our originator and, um, and memento classes. So the playlist command does not know any details about the state. It just executes the originator restore method in, in case of undo operation. And also when we uh, create the command, the backup is also uh, created by using the originator method. It is exactly the same with the concrete command class. If we compare the memento implementation with the previous command implementation, you could notice that now the state is not mutated directly in any way as it was done before. Hence, we separated the concerns and reduced the risk of negatively affect our backup state. That's all the design patterns for this talk. Uh, the presentation slides as well as the example app could be found on GitHub. Also, if the design patterns topic seemed interesting to you, do not hesitate to visit my Medium profile, where I wrote an article about each uh, design pattern uh, described in the Gang of Four book. And finally, I created an interactive library of design patterns under flutterdesignpatterns.com so you could inspect each design pattern, check the interactive example, and learn more about each of them. That's it from me. Safe trees, stay solid, thank you, and see you around.